Hi, welcome to Unit 7. We are going to discuss heaps now. We actually talked about priority queues in an earlier lecture uh, when we talked about stacks and uh, queues, right? We covered two possible implementations of a priority queue. So internally, a priority queue can, we can use a sorted list or an unsorted list to actually create a priority queue. And we covered the reasons uh, why the insert, insert is actually NQ, uh, uh, how it can be O1 and ON for the unsorted list and sorted list respectively. Now, we let's make an assumption here. Uh, the priority queue here, the concept of priority, which depends on your business scenario, right? Uh, for our context here, let's assume that the smaller the integer, the higher the priority. All right. So min is actually similar to peak. We want to take a look at the element with the highest priority in the priority queue okay, without actually extracting it. And remove min is actually the queue. All right. It's basically peak and you want to remove the highest priority element. So uh, by now, it should be quite clear why the respective time complexities are zero, are O1 and ON respectively for these three operations. All right. Now, in this unit, we are going to consider another possible implementation of a priority queue, this time using a heap. But first, let's find out what a heap is. What is, what is a heap? Now, a heap is just a binary tree that satisfies the following two requirements. Okay, number one, a heap must be a complete binary tree. And what is a complete binary tree? We mentioned this in the unit on trees. Uh, we talked about a perfect binary tree and a complete binary tree. Well, a perfect binary tree will not have gaps. So this is an example of a perfect binary tree. There cannot be gaps. On the other hand, this will be a complete binary tree. A complete binary tree will be a binary tree in which, well, there are no gaps in the upper levels, in the lowest level, there can be gaps. And if there are gaps, they must be on the right side of the tree. So in a way, a perfect binary tree is a complete binary tree, but the complete binary tree may not be a perfect binary tree. So this is an example of a complete binary tree. Okay, there are two gaps missing. Uh, I mean, there are two gaps. There are two nodes missing, right? And they are on the rightmost side. So if I remove this node, this is no longer a complete binary tree. On the other hand, if I remove this node, this is still a complete binary tree. So a heap must be a CBT, a complete binary tree. Now the second requirement is that uh, there's this heap order property requirement. For every node except a root node, the key at that particular node must be greater than its parent. Now, this is a definition of a what we call a minimum heap. Um, there is another kind of heap called a maximum heap in which the, the parent is always greater than itself. But if you can understand the minimum heap, the, the maximum heap is just the opposite. So for this unit, let's focus on minimum heaps. Now, look at this. This is the key and this is the value. So let's ignore the value. The key is five. The key must be greater than its parent, which is four. All right, let's look at this one. The key is 15, is greater than its parent. The key is nine, is greater than its parent. The key is 16, greater than the parent, which is 15. The key, 25, greater than the parent, and so on. Every single node in a heap must uh, fulfill this requirement, except the root node. Obvious reasons, right? The root node has no parent. 
Okay, so remember, a heat is just a, a binary tree which required which fulfills these two requirements. Okay. Now let's talk about the height of a heap. There are two common definitions of height. All right. Number one, the height can be defined as the number of nodes in the longest path from the root to the furthest leaf. So I shall give an example here. Okay. This is a binary tree. It is not a complete binary tree. All right. It's just a binary tree. Now, according to the first definition, the height of this tree is one, two, three, four. All right, the longest path will be this to this to this to this. The longest path from the root to the furthest leaf. And we count the number of nodes one, two, three, four. We count the number of levels. And the height of this tree is four. If we follow the first definition, a tree with only one node which is the root node, has a height of 1, according to this definition. What about the second definition? The second definition of height is the number of edges in the longest path from the root to the furthest leaf. So in this case, we do not count the number of nodes. We count the number of edges. We will be, be 1, 2. That means we actually count the path length, uh, 3. So in this case, we follow definition 2. The height of this tree is Three, not four. Okay, so be very careful when you look at textbooks and you read papers. Uh, these are two common definitions of height. For this course, we will adopt definition one. Okay, because uh, we we are adopting definition one for uh, in our unit for trees. Let, let's keep to it. Okay, based on definition one. A tree of height h will have the following levels. So we quickly draw an example here. Okay, this is a CBT, a complete binary tree. The height is four. One, two, three, four. There are four levels, uh, four levels of nodes. So this is level one. Level two level three, and level four. Okay. A perfect binary tree, a perfect binary tree means there are no gaps. Huh? We'll have uh, two to the power of h minus one nodes. Okay. Let's quickly draw a perfect binary tree here. Um, number of nodes and the height for a perfect binary tree here. Yeah? If the height is 1, number of nodes is 1. The root node. If the height is 2, we have got 3 nodes here. If the height is 3, we have got 3 plus 4, 5, 6, and 7. So 7 nodes. And if you have 4, it will be 7 plus 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So the pattern here is... Uh, sorry, do this wrong. 2 minus 1 to the power of 3 minus 1 to the power of 4 minus 1. So the pattern here for a perfect binary tree is that the number of nodes n is equivalent to the power of h minus 1. You see that? For example, let's look at this row. Huh? The number of nodes is to the power of 3 minus one, where three is the height. Remember, we're using the first definition for height. So generally for a perfect binary tree, the number of nodes and the height of the tree is rated by this equation. That's for a perfect binary tree. Okay. But for now, we are going to talk about a complete binary tree. This is h equals to 3. This is h equals to 4. So this is a complete binary tree of height 4. There's this level 4. And minimally, this is the minimum number of nodes we can find on a CBT of height 4. Okay, So this is what I'm talking about here. 
for a complete binary of height h, in this case, h is 4, levels 1 to 3 are maximally filled with the power of 3 minus 1 nodes. I'm talking about here. Okay, now the minimum number of nodes at level H is 1. For it to have a height of 4. So we know that number of nodes must be this plus 1, minimally. Okay, the minimum number of nodes must be number of nodes here, which is 2 to the power of H minus 1 minus 1. Plus one. This plus one is at level H. And then we do some working around and we get this equation. H must be smaller than log base 2n plus 1. This is minimum number of nodes. Huh? Now, on the other hand, the maximum number of nodes is 2 to the power of H minus 1. Okay, that will happen when this complete binary tree is a perfect binary tree. Some look around and we have this equation. Hence, you realize that the height of a CBT or the height of a heap is between this value and this value. All right, whatever the case, right, if you simplify that, you can see that the height is basically O log n. And since the height cannot be a fraction, right? It's actually the, the floor of log n. Okay. Keep this in mind, we will revisit this idea again. So we can actually use an array, or well, in Python, we, we talk about a list. We can use a Python list to store the values in a complete binary tree in a heap. Let's think about this. This is a list. Huh? Position 0, position 1, and so on. Position 12, index 12. Now, we store the nodes of the tree in this list. So, a node will consist of the key as well as the value. The value doesn't have to be a string. The value can be anything. All right? Let's focus only on the key. So, in subsequent examples, I'll just be storing keys. That means integers, huh? into the heap, but actually can store anything and any object as long as this object has has a key, all right? There's a, there's a get key method, for example, as well as a get value method. Now, how can we store all the nodes into a 1D list? Okay, the root can be at position zero, always at position zero. And the two children of the root, these two, will be at position 1 and 2, respectively. This one will be at this position, this one at this position, and so on. So you see the pattern is the root followed by this, followed by this. Then we go in this way and in this way. Okay, Because there are no gaps in a CBT except for the last layer, we can fill up the whole 1D list very nicely. In fact, the length of the list can tell you how many gaps there are on the lowest level. And because of the way we fill up the 1D list, huh, it becomes very easy to actually determine who is the child, who is the left child, child and who is the right child. Or rather, where is the left child and where is the right child? As well as, where is my parent? Okay. So here's an example. Uh, this is obvious. Uh, the root will always at position zero. Let's take a look at this formula. Okay. So if I want the to find the um, left child, the left child, where is the left child of a particular node? For example, I want to find the left child of this one. All right. All I have to do is to plug it into the formula. Okay, two times position four plus one, which is nine. So the left child can be found at position nine, which is this one. All right, the right child will be 
I use this formula now. 2 times 4 plus 2, which is position 10, index number 10. This one. So using this formula, I can find the left and right child of any node. If it exists. Lah. Okay, for example, this particular node has no left and right child. So if you plug it into the formula, you realize that it points to these two positions. Okay, position 13 and 14. Now using the same formula, you can easily find the parent, the position of the parent node. Right? Just, just inverse the thing. So if I want the parent of the element at position 9, all I have to do is to find out what is this value. This is just basic algebra. Okay? So this is very convenient. By using this formula, we can very easily, this is an O1 operation, find where is the position of its parent and where will be the left child and where will be its right child. Now, given an array or a list that represents a complete binary tree, for example, uh, for example, this list, given this list, can you come up with the following functions? Left child, j, and j is the index of a node. And left child returns the position or the index of the left child of j. Right child does the same thing, where it returns the position of the right child. Parent returns the parent of j. So of course, if you pass in zero to parent, it should return an error. And it, this shouldn't be too difficult. Huh? You just have to use the formula. And what's the time complexity of each of these functions? All right, it should not be worse than O1. It's just a simple mathematical calculation.